and welcome to 31 Days of Tarot 2020. I'm Catalina Francesca and this is Kaleidoscope Cat and we are here for days 21 through 25. So we are going to be starting with what is your favorite three card spread um, and my favorite three card spread uh, comes from Lindsay Mack who is a tarot teacher. Um, she does not read tarot anymore. Um, so she actually has a bunch of online courses, um, one of which is, she's currently doing an intuition course called Inner Voice, which unfortunately is like closed because it it's like a six week course and it started and so it's in process currently. Um, but she has a bunch of other fantastic courses. I'm pretty sure that Tarot for What Is, which is the course that I actually got this particular spread from, um, is one that is just open sort of permanently. Um, and so I will leave a link to her website in the description box below. Um, let me actually write. To Lindsay Mac. Um, anyways, so my favorite three card spread is what is the holy invitation of this moment? It's card one. Uh, what is happening underneath this moment? So like what is there, what's going on that maybe I'm not aware of that I'm sort of being invited to pay attention to? And then card three is what am I learning about right now? And so this is just sort of like a, a check-in type of spread, um, but I feel like this can be adapted pretty nicely to like if you're doing like a week ahead spread, like what is the holy invitation of this week? What is happening underneath? this week and what am I learning about this week. Um, so I, I think that it can be adapted really nicely. Um, yeah, so that is my favorite three card spread. Um, so then the next uh, question is what are my top five tarot decks for the decade? Super, super, super hard question. Um, so um, my absolute top deck of the decade is my beloved Shadowscapes Tarot. Come on, some cards. This is what the backs look like. Um, Okay, sorry, I'm like totally failing at this showing you cards thing. Um, I'm just gonna show you the decks because I don't I don't have like a ton to say about really each of these decks. Um, so I'm actually just I'm actually just gonna kind of list them off. Um, so, but the Shadowscapes Tarot is my first real deck and the deck that um, I just absolutely love. Um, so then my other decks that are my favorite for the decade are the Anna K Tarot. Um, I'm actually just gonna show you the bag. This is the bag for my Anna K Tarot. Um, so yeah, this is a, I do make my own tarot bags. They're very simple affairs. Some of them fit the cards better than others. Um, I keep my fountain tarot um, in this Ipsy bag. Um, uh, I'm currently using my fountain tarot just for inner voice, um, and so just for like exercises from inner voice. Um, so that one is living right next to my desk. Um, so that's three out of five. The next one is the uh, Tarot Mucha, uh, which is by Giulia Massaglia and Barbara Nocenzo, um, which is just, it's so beautiful. Um, it's very Rider Waite Smithy, but um, just the art is wonderful and I, I just really love the art. Um, and then my last one is the This Might Hurt Tarot, which is just 
amazing. Um, yeah. So those are my top tarot decks for the decade. Um, sorry, my nose is really itchy. Top oracle decks for the ec for the decade. Wow. <laughs> top oracle decks for the decade are um, the Empathic Oracle, which I'm pretty sure I've already showed some cards from. Um, the Animal Kin Oracle, which I worked with last week. Yeah, last week. Um, so, or possibly the week before. There's a really recent Weekly Working Decks video on this deck. So you can see... Christ. <laughs> so you can see some of it there. Oy vey. I am doing so great today, guys. Um, and then I have my, um, my Dow Oracle in this lovely bag with this fabric that my mom and I have some pants that we share, um, made out of this fabric, um, so that's really fun. Um, it's a little bit stretchy, um, and I do have actually some old Irish coins in here that I use for, uh, casting hexagrams. Um, and then, uh, the Vintage Wisdom Oracle is another one of my top decks. Uh, top oracle decks for the decade um, with which is the one that I'm using this week so my upcoming weekly working decks video is going to be um, featuring this deck as well dang my nose is itchy um, and then the last deck uh, that I want to mention is the soul cards one I just keep them in the box that they came in um, I don't have the soul cards too, uh, yet. I'll probably get them at some point and I may combine them into like a big deck. Um, or I may not. I will see how they feel when I, when I get them. Um, yeah, but these ones I work with like pretty much only one at a time right now. Um, but I always have very powerful experiences when I work with these. Um, so those are one of my top decks for, um, the decade. So I actually have, so I have four tarot books and two guidebooks, and I feel like each of the guidebooks really counts as sort of like half a book. So I think that that adds up to five. Um, and I, the only books, the only physical books that I have are the two guidebooks because uh, the rest of them I mostly checked out from the library. Um, so, and one of them is upstairs because it is now my sister's. Um, so that one is Tarot for Beginners by Barbara Moore. Um, Kitchen Table Tarot by Mil Melissa Sinova. Um, Tarot 101 by Kim Huggins, which is, which I remember being pretty fabulous. It's been several years since I read that book, so I don't remember exactly what was in it. And then Tarot for Writers by Corinne Kenner, um, which I now have the Kindle version of that, and I am sort of using it. Um, I've been actually using the uh, Waitsmith Borderless, which I keep in this pouch that I put, I just sort of drew um, Pixie's initials on, um, but I've been using the Waitsmith Borderless edition um, for my writing, um, and that has been really great, um, and super duper helpful. I do this writing challenge called 365k 365 days, which is this challenge to write a thousand words of creative work every day for the whole year, and this is the fourth year that I'm doing it. So I succeeded at it two years, the third year I tried it, I stopped halfway through the year because I was, it was, because it was last year and I was going into super duper hard semester, which I didn't even know at the time how hard it would be, but I was just like, I'm not even going to try to write a thousand words a day through that mess. I'm just going to come out the other side and start writing then. Um, and I was on vacation at the very beginning of the year. Um, so I got a little bit behind and then I was having trouble starting once I got home. It was a whole deal, so I'm like several days worth of writing behind 
um, but I'm slowly catching up. So, um, and then the two tarot guidebooks that I have to show you are the guidebook for the Anna K tarot, um, which is just one of my favorite decks of all time. I love it. I love the storybook feel of it because um, it really gives me like major like fairy tale vibes because it like the the illustrations are like the illustrations on the fairy tale books that I read as a kid and I love fairy tales if you I don't know I, I I'm not sure if this is something that's like super common knowledge about me but I freaking love fairy tales they are like my favorite thing ever if I was if I could write differently like, if I could choose, like, a, to have a particular writing style that I was good at, like, sort of inherently good at, um, I would choose to be, I would, I would, like, choose to have some talent in the area of writing that's, like, that's, like, um, fairy tale retellings because those are my favorite books to read. Um, unfortunately, I'm not great at that kind of writing. I have a like more slightly more like conversation heavy style. Um anyways, not super relevant. Getting off that tangent. Anna K Tarot handbook and the guidebook for the Numinous Tarot is the other book. Um, so I will put links for all of these decks in the description box. Um, I will also put links to the books, but um, when I link to, when I link for books, I put links to Powell's because I personally don't buy books from Amazon and I I've seen so many bookstores go out of business because of Amazon. Sorry, I am going to go on a very short rant here. I've seen so many bookstores go out of business because of Amazon and Amazon got their start selling books. Um and there are so there are a lot of things that I'll buy from Amazon, but books are not one of those things. And I'm not going to enable other people to buy books from Amazon either. Um, that's just like one of my very, very hard lines um, that I just do not cross. Um, and one of the things that just absolutely infuriates me is that Amazon now has these like Amazon books stores. And there's one that's like so close to where this other, this fabulous, um, this fabulous independent bookstore was. Um, it was the bookstore that I went to the, a really, a midnight release party for the seventh Harry Potter book. It went out of business several years ago at this point. I clearly still miss it. Um, yeah, it's, I just, I don't buy books from Amazon, and I'm not gonna enable other people to buy books from Amazon either. Um, decks, absolutely, because I totally do that, um, but books, no. So all of the books, all of the book links will be to Powell's, which is the uh, largest independent um, bookstore in the world, I believe. So Powell's City of Books, if you are ever in Portland, is incredible. It is one of my favorite places in the world. Um, and Powell's City of Books, that specific bookstore, is the largest bookstore in the world by either miles of shelf space or by volume. Either of those, I would believe. There, there was a list somewhere and I have lost it, but... Um, but there is a list somewhere that um, lists like the lar the like ten it was like the ten or the eight maybe largest bookstores in the world by like different metrics, and so Powell's was the largest by either miles of shelf space or by volume, and I'm not sure which. Um, 
but it it is where I try to buy most of my books from, um, if possible. Um, Powell's or independent bookstores, but I never buy books from Amazon. Um, so rant aside, <laughs> Uh, question 25 is if you could meet any tarot creator or author, who would it be and when? Um, I mean, gosh, I would love to meet Benabel when, like, any time. That would be so cool. I mean, like, honestly, I would love to meet her after spending more time with the Spirit Keepers Tarot. I'm, I got the 22 weeks with the Spirit Keepers Tarot, like, workbook in the mail yesterday, yesterday or the day before, and so I'm going to start that this upcoming week. Um, and so honestly, I would love to meet her after I've completed that 22 week period, um, because I feel like that would just be really, really cool. Um, so that is my answer for day 25. Um, yeah. I would love to see your videos, your answers to the 31 Days of Tarot prompts. Um, so if you are making videos for this, please let me know in the comments. And um, please, if you want to, please like and share and subscribe because it really helps. And I hope you have a really, really wonderful rest of your day. It is evening here, so I'm going to bed soon, which is so nice. I love bed. Um, because, you know, sleep is a magical thing. Um, and yeah, just, um, I wish, I wish the best to you all. Goodbye.